Why pay over 100 bucks a month for cable when it's half the cost for Fubo TV? Get all the channels you want. Breaking news and live sports. Entertainment for the whole family. Rated number one in customer satisfaction by J.D. Power. Try free at FuboTV.com. Who owns Combat Sports now? The king of violence! And welcome to the official press conference for Knuckle Mania 4, which is set to go down right here at the Peacock Theater on Saturday, April 27th, and what is going to be the biggest show in BKFC history. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to be a part of everything that is going to happen here at the Peacock Theater here in LA, all you have to do is go to BKFC dot com for ticket information and let me tell you right now the tickets are going very very quickly if you want to see it live in person get your tickets now don't miss out on this event now if you want to watch it at home of course we can make that happen as well just get the bkfc app and we can hook you right up here at the press conference we have our top three fights of the night at knucklemania 4 in attendance that means the main event Platinum Mike Perry, the king of violence, is going to be facing off for the very first time with the undefeated Tiago Pitbull Alves. That happens right here at the press conference. Not only that, you're going to get the president, the founder of the BKFC, David Feldman, in attendance. You know, he's always dropping announcements. And we have one of our newest signees to the company in the building as well. Now, one thing is for sure, when it is a show as monumental as Knuckle Mania 4, we can't do it without our incredible partners. Those being Bucked Up, Forged Irish Stout, Fubo TV, OnlyFans, Grunt Style Apparel, Evirum, Rasha, and one of our newest partners, Savage Sip Coffee, and folks, if you want to place a bet at Knuckle Mania 4 or any of our BKFC events, well, then all you have to do is go to ESPN Bet. Well, folks, it is about that time here. We have the media in attendance. We have some fantastic fans. They are ready to see these incredible fighters, and we got the full slate here. Not only do we have Tiago Alves and Mike Pear, we got the biggest of the big. We got Big Ben Rothwell and Todd Duffy as well. And, of course, you know that heavyweight championship bout is going to be special. Lorenzo Hunt, the champ champ, the juggernaut, is in the house with our current reigning BKFC heavyweight champion of the world, Mick Terrell from the UK. What a night it is going to be. And here's the thing, folks. We are still announcing matchups. All you have to do is check out our social media. Make sure you're checking out Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship at BKFC.com, and we can make that happen. 
Here in Los Angeles, we know that the superstars are going to be in attendance, and that is one thing for sure. You are going to see a lot of stars in attendance April 27th for Knuckle Mania 4. This is our fourth Knuckle Mania. It has been insane. Every time we up the ante over and over again, Knuckle Mania 4 is going to be big because where are we? We are in the entertainment capital here. We are in Hollywood, California for the very first time and the first time doing a show in the state of California. So you know we're pulling out all the stops. Speaking of which, they brought me a co-host. And not only did they bring me a co-host, they brought me one of the most recognizable men in all of television. He is truly an icon. He is the host of Access Hollywood, and I know you know him as your favorite jock ever from the 90s. He is the one and only Mario Lopez, and he is going to be bringing out the biggest fighters on the card for Knuckle Mania 4. And we got Mario actually stepping right in. He came straight in here, right off the highway. You know how it is here in Los Angeles. About to step onto the stage here. I jumped the gun here, threw him under the bus. But Mario is going to be up here in just a moment, folks, with the biggest fighters. And we know that there are some big implications for that fight. Big Ben Rothwell versus Todd Duffy. The end of the year last year, it was going to go down. Unable to make that fight happen. We are running it back here at Knuckle Mania 4. And the word on the street is whoever wins this fight could be in line for a heavyweight championship bout. And that's a lot to get excited about. So right now, let's go to Mario Lopez to bring out the competitors. Hey, hey. Cyrus, Cyrus, thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, great to be here. Great to be here. I'm really excited to uh, be involved in the uh, fastest growing combat sport in the world. This is really cool. A lot of world class uh, uh, athletes here and, and uh, top notch people behind this. So, with that said, let's just get right to it. Uh, April 27th is going to be monumental in the night of combat sports with so many great matchups right here in LA for the first time in California. Cannot wait. Today I'm being joined by the fighters that are making up the epic card first. I would like to welcome our hard-hitting heavyweights making his debut in the squared circle. We have Todd Duffy. Pleasure. And standing opposite him, a seasoned veteran with an unbeaten record in BKFC, Big Ben Rothwell. Let's give it up. Well, that's a, What's that's up, press people? Yeah! Yeah. All right. Ben, I, shaking Ben's hand, that was, uh, I can't imagine that with the... <laughs> just off of that, d d Ben, describe what Todd's going to feel when he, uh, he, those knuckles face... Uh, he's going to feel my meeting. knuckle right now because he brought a scale and I know he's up to. He's trying to talk some big shit, so... Uh-oh. I don't he, know if he, he's he, afraid of the scale or me. That's all I'm trying to figure what, out. What I do know what happened is he... Back in November, we met in Utah, and, uh, you know, I was like, oh, how big he is, this and that. Well, I'm 20, I'm, I don't know if you can tell, I'm clearly 20 pounds down from then, so I'm, I'm feeling in tremendous shape, really looking forward to this fight. I'm bringing everything to Todd. I'm not taking him lightly in the slightest. Uh, I owe him the fight. But when he seen me, all of a sudden, I, I kind of seen his gears turning, and next thing you know, he's turned into the flower man, and he's out, like, distributing flour to all of our, our people here, and I'm really like, this guy's out to sabotage the show now because he, he seen me. I, I'm worried maybe maybe he's the one that's going to back out now. So, you know, he's bringing a scale. He's bringing everything he can. So I'm here to make the fight happen, and uh, ho hopefully I didn't scare him out of this. Well, well Todd, as a, as a former UFC fighter, man, making your debut here at uh, BKFC, what, what excites you most about competing? I'm, in, I'm just uh, here to give Ben his flowers, like he said. You know, nobody wants to fight Ben. I'm here for you, buddy. See this? This is, yeah, he's trying to dumb us down. He's trying to make I, mess the whole card up. I'm just trying to make sure if you can help you sort whether you're afraid of the scale or you're afraid of me. I think it could be both, but we don't know. Maybe it'll help you sort things out. I'm here to give you your flowers. You definitely hit the six-foot bong for you out here because <laughs> you're out there. But, <laughs> Todd, uh, uh, <laughs> pardon me, uh, Ben, Todd's never fought in a bare-knuckle fight. Um, what, what does he have to look forward to? Honestly, I, I'm not sure too much fun for him. I mean, this, this is a tough this is a tough sport. Uh, bare knuckle is uh, it's not for everybody. But I do know him and I are going to put on one hell of a fight. Uh, we're we're going to set the bar for the for the two fights after us. 
Um, Todd and I only know how to fight one way. And I mean, I think that's why the owner, you know, David Feldman is so excited for this fight. Todd and I kind of like, he doesn't want to share with you. We actually have a good relationship and a lot of people in the MMA community we've made friends with. So it was only funny that now him and I've got to talk and got to know each other. This is about as business as it can get. We're, we're in here. We have a good time. He, he, I, this is the kind of guy I could literally be friends with or pretty much am. We're almost like friends, but we're going to do business. And you're going to watch what money, what prize fighting is all about. Like we're literally going to try to kill each other on April 27th to uh, the, the glory to all the fans who are going to get to watch that spectacle. It's, it's going to be a hell of a fight. And uh, the, the fights after us are really going to have to to bring it. They're going to they're gonna have a fight to live up to. Well, that's a real gentleman. You could be friends outside of uh, the ring, but once you step in, everything changes. So, Todd, with this opportunity to challenge for the world uh, heavyweight title, uh, how does this impact your, your mindset, how you're approaching this fight going in? I'm super excited for all that, but I'm just focused on Ben. I know what he is. I know who he is. I know what he's all about. And like I said, I think it's going to make for a more exciting fight. Um, Nobody wanted to fight the guy. Like I said, I'm here to give him his flowers. Uh, I don't think he's afraid of the scale. I don't think he's afraid of me. I think he knows what this is, and he was sick, and I get it. Like, this is a dangerous, scary, I mean, in hell, I'll be in good company. That's all I can really say. You know, we're going to hell, and that's yeah. where we're going. Oh, man, I can't in wait. In hell, I'll be in very good company. We'll be there with you. Uh, gentlemen, good luck. Cyrus, we have any questions? Yeah, we got one, we got one right here. Go ahead and uh, say where you're from, and go ahead and ask your question. This is Frankie Olagi with FightHype.com. Um, this question is for both Ben and Todd. Um, being that this is the first sanctioned BKFC event in California, is there any pressure to deliver? Um, obviously, you guys are friends to some extent, but um, once you step into that BKFC circle, is there any pressure to deliver? I don't know how there's not pressure in there. It's fire. It's fire the whole time. You're in the hot pocket. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. It's a fucking nasty war. And like I said, in hell, I'll be in good company. The part, it doesn't matter where in the world we're going to do this. It's, this is the fight. we got to go out and perform. All the eyes are going to be on us. And, I mean, it's bare knuckle. It's the closest thing to an actual street fight. Like, I'll kick this table out of the way and start fighting them right now. Like, bare knuckles right. are ready. They're ready at all times. We're ready to I'll go. hit you with a scale. We're some, we're, <laughs> Let me just go back. We, we are some of the most dangerous people on the planet. You know what I mean? Because we're practicing it so real of what we do. And, but to bring this to California, this is a huge move for BKFC. This sport is blowing up in a rate that's just unbelievable. The ownership and everybody behind BKFC is just doing such an incredible job. And I am very honored, and I'm here to give my very best to blow this event up and to bring BKFC to the next level. Absolutely. Awesome. One more yeah, we, question. Yeah, we got another one here. Uh, this one's from the Lights Out podcast here and Mike Davis. This one goes to Ben. Uh, your opponent is much larger than your other opponents. Uh, do you think that not being able to bully Todd Duffy will make you alter your game plan? Absolutely not. My, my game plan is simple. He knows what it is. I'm coming in there to beat your fucking ass, period. He knows it. I know his game plan. It's pretty similar. And there's going to be a clash. There's going to be a lot of blood, and fans are going to love it. And right. then we got one right here from the Mike and Miss show here. It's for Todd Duffy. If Ben wins the fight, he's basically a shoe-in for the title. Do you think you're going to be given the same opportunity if you come out victorious at Nelkomania 4? No doubt. I'm fighting the best heavyweight in the division. It's not a secret. He's the boogeyman of the BKFC. There's a reason they're having me fight him. So, yes, this is, this is the number one contender's title fight. And, yes, I do expect to have a title fight after I win this fight. You hear that, Mick Terrell? He just pulled his pants down on you. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. It's now time to face off. You can step down off the stage, please. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, up next, we're going to be joined by our co-main event. Let's check out this promo. Who owns Combat Sports now? The King of Violet! Let the Down goes Michael Page in round one. Chase and Rocky Balboa versus Apollo Creed.
All right, let's keep it rolling. This next one is going to be filled with championship gold. Please welcome to the stage the current pound for pound king of BKFC, the double champ, Lorenzo the Juggernaut Hunt. And facing off against them will be the hard hitting world heavyweight champion, UK's very own Mick Terrell. Gentlemen, please have a seat. Mick, you're from, uh, you're from the UK, of course, the birthplace of uh, Bare Knuckle. Uh, you're used to fighting heavyweights, and, and Lorenzo is not. You feel he's, uh, he's bitten off more than he can chew here. Um, the biggest part of Lorenzo is his mouth, which is going to be easy at the punch, I'm afraid. Hmm. It's very serious. Uh, <laughs> Uh, being ranked the number one pound for pound uh, bare knuckle fighter, uh, Mick, in the world, how do you stay motivated and continuously strive to, to improve? Um, I like beating up big guys. So this is kind of like a, one of my favorite things to do in the world is to prove these big mouth fat guys wrong. They think punch, that punch. because they're heavy, got it, that they can beat anyone, but they're wrong. Thank you. Right. That, and, and Mill, do you, Mick, do you feel like a win over uh, Lorenzo on April 27th will make you the pound for, top pound for pound fighter in the sport here? I'm not too sure on the pound for pounds, obviously, Lorenzo. I've, I've got a lot of respect for the way Lorenzo fights. He's good, you know. But, like, pound for pound, what does that actually mean? Does it, I mean, really, pound for pound, if you're, if you're five stone and you're fighting a 12 stone man, and you, you're going to get beat off a 12 stone I'll man. I'll tell you what it means. It means that anybody, anywhere in the world that stands in there with me is in more trouble than they've ever been in in their life. And it's been proven. I have the most knockouts in BKFC. I have the most wins in BKFC. I, I am the king of BKFC. And the only reason you got that belt is because they gave you the shot before they gave it to me. I think I've got more knockouts than you, actually. I've had 10 penalty fights. I've stopped eight. Listen, we're not talking about what goes on over in the UK. We're talking about what goes on right here in the great America. And that's where you're at, and that's where you're going down. You're going down right here. The belt is staying right here. We don't care what you did over there fighting them toothless bums. You finna come over here and fight the best in the world. Your but, thoughts, Mick? Lorenzo, I'm not being funny. When you get put on the back foot, and I will put you on the back foot, and I want to punch you very, very hard. How? You're too you're slow. You're too flat-footed. Lorenzo, you, you, you send telegrams when you throw your punches. Your hooks come from about four miles away. What's a telegram? <laughs> the, stop the games. Listen, you're older than listen, me, man. There's a reason I'm here, folks. Uh, Mick Terrell got lucky. He took the belt over, overseas with him. I'm here to bring it back home. Look, I'm, that's what I do. They call the assassin. I am the best bare knuckle fighter in the world. And they called a specialist here to come bring that belt back. You're the best at beating up little people. That's a bully. Everybody. Yeah. No, not everyone. I watch your sport. You keep spawning little people. Yeah, you don't spawn big people. I don't need to. All I need is you and your face. That's all I need. All I need is you can't take a shot, Nick. I've watched you take punches and take a knee. I've never taken a knee. I've watched you. So you, you, you don't, don't got it. Don't you don't got it, Nick. Nick, <laughs> what is your prediction for this fight? I'm going to put Lorenzo on the back foot, and I'm going to punch him very hard lots of times. And he's going to be, I'll tell you what, Lorenzo's very explosive. Lorenzo's going to be good for about two to three minutes. And then the weight's going to start getting you. I'm going to lean on you. I'm going to push you on the back foot. And I'm going to catch you straight on your chin. And I cannot miss it because your mouth's that big. And you're going to sleep. Lorenzo, what's your prediction, sir? I'm bringing the bell home. It's as simple as that. And uh, when Mick Terrell shows up fight night, he's going to realize he's in the ring with the most violent, vicious, bare knuckle fighter in the world. This is not back home where you guys were fighting for crumpets. You right here fighting for real money in America and you might not make it home if you keep running your fucking mouth. Lorenzo, you're getting dropped off middleweight. You're getting dropped off middleweight, come on. That's, that makes all the more sense in the world. Smaller guys can get in, they can get punches in that you can't get in, their reaction time is faster. Mike Richmond was a monster and I put him away. 
and I, oh, I was a good I, I'll, I'll, I'll give that. I'll give that. It listen, was a great I did, I like what, I did what had to be done in order to be a multi weight class champion. You've never challenged a cruiserweight. You could never do what I do. There's no one in the world that could do what I've done. I'm the Irish BKB champion, a cruiserweight. I was a cruiserweight. I used to fight little. I'm now a heavyweight. I fought heavyweight lots of years. What I'm will you be heavy. after I sit you down? I will be champion. You will be crying, most likely. Mm. Well, gentlemen, right now, let's get some uh, questions from the media. Cyrus, go ahead. Yeah, so all right, we got from the Mike and Misha. This is for the champ champ, uh, Lorenzo Hunt. Can you put into words how important winning this fight at Knuckle Mania 4 is for you? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I can. Um, after I assert myself as the most dominant bare-knuckle fighter in the history of the world is that, that has ever done it, I'm going to travel the world and basically challenge all the other champions to a bare knuckle fight uh, for bare knuckle FC. Then after that, I'm going to go around all America and just give all the tryout guys a chance. I'll make it simple as a talent scout. If you knock me down, you get a contract in BKFC and I'll give you a $10,000 sponsorship. Anybody in America who can knock me down can get a contract. I'm looking past you, bro. You can't, you have nothing for me, Mick. Uh, Lorenzo, if you knock down a few You'll be an afterthought shortly. I'll be a what? An afterthought. Nobody afterthought. will know you anymore. You're going into retirement, into the ether, with the, the rest of those guys that ran their mouth about what I could do to them. They're gone. The people I fight, they don't fight anymore. Lorenzo, can I remember after I won that title, I won the press conference, and you said, I would not come back. Unfortunately, mate, I'm back, and I'm going to hurt you. I like that about you. Uh, Mick Terrell said I'm his favorite fighter. Why? You're good. You're great to watch. I like watching you. Then you know what's about to happen. Yeah, I'm going to burst your lips open. Mm. <laughs> okay, um, gentlemen, one more from the media. This is Frankie Olagio with fighthype.com. Um, this is kind of a double question here for Lorenzo and Mick. Um, being that you're chasing your third division world title, um, obviously that's just bigger than just what's on the line. You know, it's kind of cementing your legacy as a bare knuckle fighter. Um, Mick, uh, do you want to keep him from receiving such status in the BKFC, uh, winning uh, th th uh, titles in three divisions? Do I want to win titles in three divisions? Oh. He's looking to do that. So I didn't hear what was said there. Well, I'll answer for him because he's a little slow. He's already a little punchy. Um, anyway, so it's not that he even has a chance to keep me from becoming the, the, the triple world champ. What he needs to do is try to make it home the way he came here because I'm going to be swinging and knock pieces off of Mick Terrell. He's bigger than me, that's true, but he's soft. Look at him. He's soft everywhere. I can punch you in your tit and knock you down. Bro, you're soft everywhere. And this is you after training. You've been training now for about two months, trying to get ready for me. You lost about maybe 15, 20 pounds, and you're still soft. You're still soft. A body shot will put you down. Lorenzo, you threw your shots from like five meters away. And you're too slow to move. I'm telling you now, you will get caught. As soon as you throw a wild hook, you'll get caught with a counter punch straight down the middle. Risk and your life for a jab. You cannot fight Risk your on the life back for foot. a jab, buddy. Risk your life for a jab. You cannot fight on the back foot, and you know you cannot. You know what I, I love, fight about, on the back foot, you know the what I love about unconscious people? They never say, I'm sorry. They never say that they were wrong. They're always right. Even when they're asleep, they woke up and they don't know what happened. I'm going to knock you out. They gave me a knockout bonus. They paid me extra to knock your ass out. I'm going to knock you out, bro. You've lost your money. You've lost your money, I'm afraid. You're going to get no money. Okay, gentlemen, one last question before our face-off here. Hi, Adriana Noriega from ABN Sports and Fox Deportes. This question is for both of you. Would you guys be able to give us a description of how you visualize the, fa the fight going on, and at the end, how do you visualize the victory going? Basically, Lorenzo's going to come out flying like he always does. That's what makes him good. He's going to come out flying. He's going to get caught with a couple of counter shots. I want to put Lorenzo on the back foot. The stamina's going to kick in. I don't think Lorenzo's going to have it, and I'm going to knock Lorenzo out. Um, I can give it to you. Um, this guy is really slow. He comes out really slow. It's almost like he's stuttering in his brain and the way that he thinks. I'm going to come out flying. I'm going to press him. I'm going to hit him in his belly button. I'm going to hit him in his tits. 
I'm going to hit him everywhere that he <laughs> expect that he couldn't train. And then I'm going to touch that jaw. And when I touch that jaw, he's going to change. He's going to start swinging wild punches. When he miss, he's going to look up like he fell asleep driving. Anybody ever fell asleep driving before? When you wake up, you're going to be like, shit, I could have died. Well, gentlemen, we're going to find out how it all goes down April 27th. If we could please uh, step off the stage for a face off. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, up next, we're going to hear from the president of BKFC right after this break. Who owns Combat Sports now? The King of Violence! Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now to acknowledge the visionary behind the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Please join me in welcoming president and founder of BKFC, Mr. David Feldman. How are you enjoying the show so far, Mario? I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm fired up. Can't wait for April 27th uh, to get here. I can't, uh, can't come soon enough. Um, what, what inspired you, David, to create this organization dedicated to bare knuckle fighting? And, and how do you see the sport evolving in the future? I mean, it's already growing so rapidly. You know, I just thought that um, combat sports was missing something. You know, I think this is a, something a little special, something a little different, something very real and relatable to people. Because everybody in this room has seen someone get punched in the face before, maybe punch someone in the face before they get it, they understand it. And I thought that this is the kind of sport that can really, really evolve. And I said, look, let's put something out there that everybody really can recognize and really can grow with. And something that I think it's just, it's unbelievable. It's fast paced, it's exciting. It's everything that a fight fan wants to see. Absolutely, it's raw and it's with world-class athletes, and that's what people want these days as we continue to move forward. Can 100%. you share any uh, insights into the challenges uh, and, and opportunities uh, of hosting here in California, it being the, the, the first time. What can fans expect? This is going to be a historic event. Well, I mean, you know, it, it took us a while to get it uh, regulated and legal here in, in California. I have a great relationship with the commissioner, Andy Foster, now. He welcomed us with open arms now. He, um, this is going to be an amazing event. So far, the buzz, the ticket sales, um, the interest around this event has just been historical for us. And we're just so excited about being here in Los Angeles and having all these Los Angeles fans and the fighters from Los Angeles really banging it out in front of their own fans and giving the fans what they want to see. Um, with the uh, continued growth and success here at BKFC, what initiatives are you implementing to further elevate the sport and attract new fans and, and, and fighters? We're just... We're, we're kind of building it both ways now. We're, we're building it from the ground up and we're building it from the top down, meaning from the ground up, we're doing tryouts around the world. We're doing smaller shows all around the world. We're expanding into, we'll do fights in nine different countries this year. Wow. So we're expanding all over the world. And then from the top down, we're gonna bring some former world champions or even current world champions from boxing and mixed martial arts over to BKFC so we can bring their fan base over and these, their fans can be able to see the baddest sport on the planet. You know, this is the most exciting combat sport on the planet, hands down. If you watch it live, you really, I don't care how big of a boxing fan you are or how big of an MMA fan you are, if you watch this sport live in person, you really don't want to watch anything else. It's unbelievable, Mario. And you mentioned um, you're going international and being in a different countries, and I understand there's a new signing, signing, I should say, 
that uh, you recently got. Uh, I can't wait to hear more about it. Can you share some um, insights about this uh, new additions? Um, we've actually been doing a ton of signings all over the world. Um, we've, we're expanding all over the world, but I don't know who, which one that is, if you want to tell me. Just... And in particular, I heard uh, Alfredo Angulo. Oh, El Perro. It's Alfredo Angulo. Alfredo Angulo fought everybody in the world in boxing. Yeah. He fought plenty of world champions. Alfredo Angulo, I am so, so excited to have him be a part of BKFC. He is actually built for this sport. He walks right forward. He, he just walks into punches, and he punches hard. And, you know, it's an amazing opportunity for us and for Alfredo Angulo to resurrect his career here at BKFC. Yeah, no, I've seen him fight a, a bunch of times. He's a hell of a fighter, too. I believe he's here. Can we welcome uh, Al Alfredo Angulo to the stage? El Perro. Alfredo Angulo. ¿Cómo estamos? Muy bien, okay. Welcome. Muy bien. Siéntate, por favor. Oh, we have a translator, too. Okay, you do that. I could have done it, but we'll do it. Um, Alfredo, uh, welcome to BKFC. Uh, as you transition from boxing to bare knuckle fighting, what made it, what motivated you to, to join, and, and how do you uh, see this new chapter? Pues la verdad me me siento muy muy emocionado. Estoy muy contento de de pertenecer a esta nueva nueva era de de boxeo. Yo creo que es lo mismo, pero <coughs> vino algo a mi mente cuando me ofrecieron lo de Nacos. Dicen que podrán sacar al perro del barrio, pero el barrio no lo pueden sacar del, del perro. He's very excited to be a part of this new opportunity, this new adventure. Uh, but deep down inside, there's, there's a saying that says you can get the dog outside the rough neighborhood, but you can never get that rough neighborhood out of the dog. And, and, and fans are excited to see you bring uh, your boxing skills to the BKFC. Do, do you feel like you're going to have that same... Mexican warrior spirit in approach to boxing without the gloves. Yo creo que que van a ver lo mejor del perro. Van a ver un perro que viene del del barrio. Cuando cuando me peleaba por gratis. Hoy no me estoy peleando por gratis. Hoy me van a pagar por por hacer lo que disfruto hacer. You're gonna see the best version of el perro, of the dog. You're gonna see. Um, someone who, who's going to give it his, his all, the, a dog really from the hood. And uh, we have a couple questions, actually, I think, from uh, Cyrus right here. Cyrus. We do, actually, and this one's actually for the president, David Feldman. Um, the question is from the Mike and Miss show, will the king of violence belt be on the line with Perry and Alves? And on top of that, can we see a queen of violence belt when uh, Christina Faria fights Heather Hardy in May? Two um, questions there. Yeah, we're, the, the King of Violence uh, belt is not on the line for this one. It wasn't something that we planned for this one, but it's going to be a King of Violence fight because whoever wins this fight is going to be the King of Violence. Um, the Queen of Violence belt is on the line for Christine Faria versus Heather Hardy. I think that they're two you know, unstoppable forces that are going to just meet at Mohegan Sun on May 11th, so we're excited about that. And we got another question to you as well, uh, David. It is... Uh, what other surprises can we expect on the Knuckle Mania card? Is there any other fights that you're expecting to announce soon? Any other surprises that might be on the card? Um, they're surprises. <laughs> well, let's break one. Let's no, break um, one today. Listen, we have, we have a tremendous undercard. We do have a couple signings that we're going to announce that night. Actually, some really special signings that we're going to announce the night of Knuckle Mania. This was one of our surprises. We have Mario Lopez now who, who is hosting the press conference, who will also host... Um, Knuckle Mania 4 as well so we have you know we just don't know all the surprises right the surprises happen to us every day and every week and we're definitely going to certainly going to have some surprises there yeah very excited thank you so much gracias por todo buena suerte amigo nos vemos okay thank you Dave thank you now let's see what's coming up in our main event Who owns Combat Sports now? The, the King, King of Violence! Let the fight perish! Down goes Michael Page in round one. It's a Rocky Balboa versus Apollo Creed. Mike Page! The right hand down goes Julie Diaz! Three punch combination and sequence there from Alex. I'm the king of this shit, man. When it goes
concentrate and punch this stay in the pocket, nobody can fuck with me. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. The main event. Please join me in welcoming the former BKFC middleweight world champion, Tiago Pitbull Alves. And his opponent, one of the most electrifying fighters in the game with a reputation for leaving everything in the ring and a style that's earned him the king of violence belt, Platinum Mike Perry. All right, gentlemen. Uh, Mike, many fans, man, consider you to be the face of bare knuckle fighting. Um, on April 27th, how are you going to prove that to Tiago? King of Violence stays home with me, baby. <laughs> uh, for the pit bull here, what, what, what do you think, uh, Tiago, facing off against Mike Perry? Uh, both of you are undefeated right now. Uh, what type of fight do you expect? I expect a war, you know. Uh, Mike is definitely the face of BKFC, uh, BKFC right now. Uh, you know, exciting dude to, to fight against uh, on a very exciting night. And uh, I'm ready, man. I'm ready for this fight, and uh, I'm going to be the king of violence. No, sir. I'm going to keep it clean. I'm going to have a, a soapy performance. I'm going to um, touch you up. I'm going to get in and out. And, um, man, simply put, like, like, I don't, you, you ready for a war, and I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to stick and move, I'm going to box, and, and let's see what happens after four minutes. Let's see if you choose to get up off that stool after four minutes. I mean, uh, you kind of, I, I never see you stick and move before, you know, you're kind of stiff, you always dare to get hit, so that's going to be a first. You, uh, I'm looking you forward to You and the game. rest of the fans who think they know what they watching... But I know boxing much better than you, sir. You think you know what you're watching, but you don't know nothing. Everybody got a plan until they get punched in the face. Yeah, I agree with that. And, you know, I'm going to be punching the face, too. So we'll see. You are going to be punched in the face. That's what you said. Yeah, I'm going to be punching you in the face. That's okay. I'll break your hand. <laughs> Mike, what do you... I about uh, it. I was like, Mike, what do you, uh, what do you, what do you think about... Um, Tiago's layoff. You think uh, the rest will help him, or will it uh, be I, a detriment? I think if he coming for a check, I'm gonna break his neck. Tiago, I mean, you can look at two ways, right? Um, I haven't taken any damage in a very long time. You know, I'm fresh. I'm excited. Um, yeah, the layout. You know, it's never a good thing. Uh, this fight was supposed to happen a long time ago, uh, for reasons that you know doesn't make sense to talk about right now. It didn't happen. Uh, he's definitely, you know, the face of BKFC anymore uh, right now. He's definitely uh, been active, you know. So everything is going for him. But I like my odds, you know. I believe in myself. I believe in my training camp, you know. I believe in my pedigree. And think uh, the layoff is not going to mean anything. I'm going to get there on April 27, and I'm going to be the king of violence. What motivated you to come back to BKFC? Uh, two things, you know, the, the paycheck, of course, and uh, the opportunity. You know, Mike is a phenomenal fighter. You know, he's an exciting dude. I think he's fucking hilarious, you know, and uh, that's a big show, uh, Nakomania 4. Be able to headline this show against Mike Perry, you know, it's a good opportunity, so I couldn't say no. It ain't going to be so funny when I'm in there getting you. Uh, it, it goes both ways, brother. I, I know it what you're talking though. about. It ain't going to go uh, both it ways. It will. Trust me. It Listen, will. Listen, I was looking at Eddie. I was looking at him through the barrel of the gun. And I was at the end Eddie's of that a second 55er. round. I was pointing at him like this. Ooh, 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 I He's got you. I found you. I found you two in a row. Didn't last more than four minutes. I fought eight minutes last year. So maybe your two years off won't matter. But it doesn't matter. You could train boxing for the rest of your life and never be better than me because I was born with the swagger that I bring into the boxing ring. 
Or is there only one way to find out, right? You're so right. We're gonna yeah, find we're going to get there. But we're here to talk about it today. Oh, we've been talking about it. You being so nice to me. I am a nice guy, you know. I always been a class act, you know. I never been a. No, you a, mugged me once. I'm old school, bro. You mugged me I once mugged from back in the day when I you was coaching <laughs> mugged, not like robbed, but like oh, mean okay. mug, like a mean mug. When? Back in the day, you was coaching somebody. I was cutting weight on the card. I was like 172 pounds. It was the day before weigh-ins, and you was coaching someone on the card, and you was mugging me in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> and I never forgot that, bro. I hold grudges. I think you're just hungry, bro. You're probably hungry at I the time grudges. you're imagining stuff, you know? But yeah, dude, whatever you got to say, you know, whatever you got to do to pump yourself up, do it. Has this been a fight, Mike, that you've been uh, waiting for, looking forward to? I love the fact that, I mean, he has, other than Julian Lane, Julian Lane had nine bare knuckle fights. He has two. He also beat Julian Lane. Um, Eddie had one bare knuckle fight. Obviously, they all had much experience in other in MMA competition world championship fights the best thing he's ever done is lost to George St. Pierre and George St. Pierre couldn't box with me in there either he wouldn't even think about coming over here so you know um I just don't think look it don't matter what I think all I know is when I get in the ring bro and I tuck my chin I'm more violent than you I'm more savage than you I got a better chin than you I want to fight more than you I box more than you I would have never left for two years Tiago what are fans going to see on April 27th uh, they're going to see a beautiful performance by me putting away the golden boy Mike Perry I'm not gold baby it's platinum all right, let's go to Cyrus right now. We've got some questions. This is Gabriel Gonzalez, Cage Side Press. Mike Perry, can you just talk about what it means to you to be the man at the very top of an event named Knuckle Mania? <laughs> uh, I like to fight, and I'm going to knock out his lights, and when he wake up, he will be all right. Tingasso way. Mike, Brandon, BroBible.com. Uh, this outfit you're wearing is uh, pretty, pretty excellent. I'm wondering if you could talk us through it. Shout out, shout out, LA. You know, I, I had to rock it for, I had to rock it for the West Coast. Look, 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 look. We ain't, we, we might be some type of slave up here. We a couple of East Coast boys finna put on a show for y'all in the West Coast. A uh, couple of East Coast boys gonna throw down, and I'm a cut him up, bust him up, bloody him up. And, uh, you know, I might trickle a little bit, too, just because I like the blood, baby. You know what I'm saying? Sorry. Um, Frankie Olaga with FightHack.com. Tiago, um, being that you were the inaugural middleweight champion in BKFC, um, is that a goal of yours with this return to get past Mike and get some gold around your waist? Uh, one thing at a time, you know. Uh, we'll see. Um, I'm 100% focused on a fight on April 27, and then after that, we'll figure it out what's next. Um, Mike Perry with the win over Thiago Alves, it would just put you in line for possibly a bigger fight. Um, I know in the past you had a stare down with Conor McGregor in the ring. Um, you're obviously looking for a real big fight so you can put big KFC on the map. Um, getting past Thiago, do you think you'll get something like that long down, uh, further down the line? I think this is a really big fight. Because it's a Mike Perry fight. And um, I have an experienced former bare-knuckle world champion who did not lose his title. He vacated his title until a bigger, better opportunity fight came along. And Mike Perry came into bare-knuckle fighting championships and started smacking people up in four minutes or less. So let's see if Tiago makes it into the third round. If he chooses to get up off of that stool, he's a fool, and I'm gonna put him in the pool. <laughs> Great rhyming, bro. <laughs> On that note, gentlemen, I cannot wait for April 27th. If you would please step off the stage and let's do a face off.
Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And thank you to all the fighters who uh, joined me today ahead of this uh, monumental event that's going down April 27th right here in L.A. at the Peacock Theater. You do not want to miss it. Back to you, Cyrus. And what a night it is going to be. You saw the face-offs. You saw the trash talk. It all happens Saturday, April 27th, right here in the Peacock Theater for Knuckle Mania 4. Once again, BKFC.com if you want to see it live and get tickets. BKFC app if you want to watch it live. Whatever it is, don't miss it. Knuckle Mania 4 from L.A. We're going Hollywood. Saturday, April 27th, we'll see you at Knuckle Mania. Who owns Combat Sports now? The King of Violence! bucks a month for cable when it's half the cost for Fubo TV. Get all the channels you want. Breaking news and live sports. Entertainment for the whole family. Rated number one in customer satisfaction by J.D. Power. Try free at FuboTV.com.